What's up guys, this is RG giving you another High Definition Broadcast. As you can see, we're here on Unison League and we are going to be doing the long-awaited, super awesome, cool, guaranteed pro guide about uh, how to build your character for this next RGB as the RGB has uh, come up and the announcement has been made. So we're going to get into the RGB uh, stats for all your characters and all that and there will be a... Uh, legend in the description because i'll just do all, all at once just like last time but um before that is uh going to happen i wanted to do, go ahead and, and tell you guys that um we are recruiting in my uh guild uh that is my alt guild actually this is my alt right here easy 772 was my brother's character but i took over once he stopped playing this is my girlfriend right here and that's sakura the one who draws all my pictures uh, as you as you see on the right side so um, uh, we are looking for <clears throat> either three CB archers crystal break archers because we are uh, you know moving some people around um, but yeah uh, either three CB archers or two CB archers and one um, what do you call priest so a healer sorry let me get um, this Jesus beam out of the way as it is bad luck as you guys saw from the last time uh, there we go so the Jesus beam is now no longer oh got a little blocker right here there all right so basically we need those uh, three CB archers or we would like to have a healer and then two CB archers uh, that would be nice because right now we are currently having a like DPS issue as we do have some uh, low DPS in here. We're gonna get uh, some people out. So uh, definitely apply it. What we need is a plus, like 130 plus uh, gear score, preferably on CB archers. And then if you could have at least like um, you know 40, 40 or 45, 45 would be great. Um, these stats would be amazing if you can get 50, 50 on archer. Uh, that would be amazing, and we would take you instantly. Um, as long as you can make uh, guild battles, right, for RGB, uh, we are looking for attendance. So definitely go ahead and put your uh, your names below uh, or whatever you like, or you can just message me on EZ772, or you can message me on my character uh, right here. So you can just do that if you like. Uh, message me on um, you know RG here. This is the uh, ID, and it's also in the description. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and get into the class video. I will tell you everything you need to know about each class as well as what you need sh should be building um, in terms of just my opinion. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I wanted to talk about is the general uh, as I am playing general and um, that's what I'm doing for RGP. So let's go ahead and talk about that. What I suggest for a general is going into what I call a, a uh, 5 6 6 2 build. So, what that means is that you can equip five weapons, six ar uh, helmets, six armors, and then two uh, monsters here. This is not my final um, allocation because I have to scoot some stuff around. But look, I do have a, a XXL. Um, sword here that I actually spawned on a uh, three spawn super duper lucky um, but uh, yeah I think it's just up, up to luck as far as the spawns go but I didn't record it <laughs> so yeah anyways so basically just um, all you have to do is go five six six two meaning that you can equip any five you are uh, like say XL um, physical testament like all these are 26 25 so they're all physical testament and then you are um, six helmets that are you are, as well as six armors that are you are, and then two you are monsters. Uh, the monsters just being something that you can contest with, like say an Apollo or an Avsaris, and then uh, you know you can have an Apollo and an Avsaris, whatever you want, right? Um, or an Alice and an Apollo, blah blah blah. So you can contest two different types of uh, elements so that you would be able to do that. Uh, I would suggest going Apollo and Absaris as they do benefit the general's stats a bit more in that regard. So um, as far as uh, the skills you want to go for the general, 
uh, you definitely want to go ahead and pick up, um, let's see, I'll go ahead and look at my abilities here instead. So the first thing you want to do uh, for the general is uh, you want to pick up this right here, Divine Smash, and uh, you also want to pick up right here, the Dual Sword. Now, the, depending on um, what your guys' strategy is, uh, say if your front line is trying to do just as much damage as you possibly can, you can pick up both of these at the same time, or you can just choose one of them, and then go more tanky build. You can put like say a Heaven's Breath in there, a Charisma, and a Cheer. Uh, or you can take that, take out the Heaven's Breath and put in a Guard, as well as going like say something like this, uh, where you just have Guard and, and Cheers. Uh, or if you're going full out damage, uh, you could do something like this, uh, where you're going Divine Smash in here, uh, you have both of these, and then say you don't even need Charisma right here, you can put in an EE or something like this, um, that would be pretty devastating. I do this um, build for uh, Colosseum, instead of Cheer, I use uh, Heaven's Breath. So if you're like a, a really, really strong uh, general in your guild, and then um, you're not required to have cheer or charisma you can go something like this and then just pop your EE and then p bust your dual swords out at the first thing and then or you can pop your EE and like say use your heaven's breath if, if um, you know there's a bunch of mages or something also uh, if this is too much uh, on HB you can also go like something like that um, you know or if you don't like EE at all you can go something like this uh, so, you know, there's a bunch of different options you can go, but uh, I would definitely suggest the 5662 build with um, this, um, and it'll it'll do you right. Uh, as far as uh, the general's uh, equipment goes in terms of procs, you just want to go ahead and um, have all physical testament here, uh, or fatal testament. If you have uh, the fatal testament sword, you can put that in. It's the Azen sword. Um, as far as the helmets and armors go, you want to just go half and half. So half uh, physical procs and half magic procs. And then the um, the monsters, you want to go just like one Apollo and then one uh, Avsteris. Unless there's some specific type of monster that your guild is telling you to go, then you should just do that and follow your guild strategy. Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, get into the next class, which is going to be Arch Dragoon. Um, this also, I would suggest um, you go, you also go uh, either either six four three six or six five five three. Um, the reason being that you need to put a uh, high amount of damage out on Lancer most of the time, um, but also the, you you could you do need to be semi tanky. So I would suggest having six weapons. So have another weapon here, and they should all be physical testament. So um, you know your your gear cost isn't going to be like this it's going to be something like around 150 like 150 to 160 on your weapon and then your helmet and your armors it's going to be more around uh like 125 125 and then your your monster you just use the rest in there which would be three so let's see three that would be around 90. so like uh you're gonna have 504 costs just staying right now. Probably should say that earlier, but it's 504 costs. You could just have uh, looked at my um, basic allocation and then added it up, and it's gonna add up to 504, okay? So once you have that in mind, you can just build out your character uh, accordingly, saying like, okay, he said go five, you know, he said go six five five three for uh, the the uh, Arch Dragoon, right? So basically, you're just gonna go ahead and allocate that cost that way, all right? And uh, as far as you know, the procs, physical testament on the uh, lances, which are you know obviously it's gonna be physical testament on the lances like this. Uh, and then the um, <clears throat> helmets and armors, you just wanna go uh, base. You know, f if you have five, five, you would just go five. Um, five or four of each of the like magic and then uh, physical and then you'll have two constants one physical and one magic 
Uh, or you can, if you don't have any constants, you can just go 5 magic reflect and then 5 physical reflect, you know, or damage down, whichever ones you guys have. Alright, so as far as the abilities go for the Arch Dragoon, you definitely want to put in the base skills here, uh, which is Sting and Savage Sting. Uh, the, the, these are the base skills that you're going to use for the Lancer, right? So you just want to, you don't want to put all of them in at a time time, obviously, right? So you can go something like this. A lot of people go this build, which is um, the basic build for a Lancer. Uh, and they use cheer right here. If you're not a cheer guild, like you're just trying to win the first battle, you can take out cheer if you want. I would suggest keeping it in, but you could go like something like guard if you're um, just if you, if you don't use cheer at all. Uh, if no one else is using cheer, you're the only one using cheer. It's not going to be that effective. But if all, all of you guys are using cheer, you should definitely put that back in. Um, the Aether Exchange is just to getting getting off the first Night Splits on the same target. If you have two Lancers, it's really good to be using like an Aether Exchange and then Night Splitting the same target. That's a really good strategy. Another strategy you can use instead of uh, like Night Splits. Uh, now that we have a, a lot of HP, you could go something like this Double Sting here. Something that you could do. It's probably more effective damage for the uh, Crystal damage. Uh, or you can go like something like this if you're going straight uh, If you're going straight up crystal damage like a CB like crystal break uh, Lancer, I would suggest definitely using um, This right here not that This right here This build is pretty good for a uh, straight up CB Lancer just because you have your EE uh, Your bestial shout and then your stings and savage things are on low cooldown um, so you could do something like this, uh, especially uh, if you don't you don't like really need to use EE on this guy because, um, like, say you you've been sitting there for so long or you always sit there for so long, you could take this out. However, I do suggest having EE -E in here because if you're using your BCS out right off the bat, it's just 15 costs that you're taking straight out, and then this will, is just going to give it right back to you. Um, so as a CB, you usually want to keep EE in there, but you could do something like this if you're like guaranteed not gonna have to use uh, EE like every you never use it or something like that. But I, I definitely would suggest using it. As far as um, the Lancer go, that's how pretty much how it how it's gonna break down. Uh, again, I think the the best Lancer strategy for right now is going uh, Savage Sting, Night Splits. Uh, ether exchange and uh, cheer just because you're going to be a front line as this build <clears throat> so that's really uh, what I would go okay um, if you hate AE with a passion I would say go guard alright so that's pretty much it for the Lancer or Arch Dragoon the next thing I'm going to go ahead and get into is the Oracle and I probably should have done this right after the general because it's the same exact uh, uh, layout as in terms of gear score. So let's go ahead and change my class to Oracle. And then, ooh. and then basically what you want to do on the Oracle is the same thing as five six six two, which will allow you to have five relics. So all the procs will be really nice. In terms of relics, you want to go for a Heart of Health all the way. Five heart of health is suggested. I don't have five, five heart of health. I actually did something like I, I infused this one, which I, I probably shouldn't have done that because infusing it, it's not going to give me too, too much. And if I had five heart of health on my cleric, it'd be a lot better than having just like another heal here. However, it's not too, too bad. So, uh, you know, if you don't have like five, five heart of health, you can use this instead, which is heart of recovery. Heal and recover and cure is going to be uh, boosted with that. So, uh, in terms of the, um, well, let's go ahead and go back in there and, and I'll show you. Uh, it's going to be the exact same skill. Uh, I mean, the cost allocation is this. Uh, so you can equip five relics, um, and then you can equip, you know, equip the helmets and the armors. And then just try to balance it out. As far as the monsters go, you can use two monsters. Uh, as a cleric, I would probably suggest either using Nyx or the Marduk. 
and then one element class weapon uh monster definitely i wouldn't go for like an apollo i'd probably go for um you know an alice and a um an Avsaris if you have them uh, if you don't have Alice or Avsaris you just have like Marduk and uh, Nyx you can just do that uh, just make sure you're using the correct one and um, you don't mess up your whole team with with your element there or like say uh, somebody's using you know all dark and then you're the only one who has a light you just go just go dark so that you don't mess up the whole team so just make sure you're doing that um, all right Obviously, you want 198 on all your stuff as a healer, besides your weapons, obviously, because you don't want uh, plus damage, right? You just want 99 on there. <clears throat> on the bottom stat, would be. Alright, so, um, as far as the abilities for the Oracle, uh, what you want to go is two single target heals, uh, one uh, Dignity, and then EE, I would say. I just because having cheer on a healer, it's just like almost you're gonna be getting all your stuff back anyways, and in and when you uh, or your unison back anyways, and when you're in a um, in a recovery phase, you can go to zero to a hundred real quick. No, <laughs> you can go to a zero to a hundred um, pretty fast because uh, all you have to do is just spam your heals all over the place, and then. Yeah, I would actually go EE on this build. This is prob probably the most effective build for me because you, uh, right off the bat, if you have like say a bunch of mages on the other side, you can EE and then Dignity right off the bat, and it'll heal everybody instead of trying to figure out who they're going, who the mages are, who like what three people they're targeting. They have a better chance of surviving that way. Uh, most of the time the mages won't attack the priest because he has incredibly high magic defense and most of the time uh, it negates their meteors uh, and usually you don't die especially if you're healing yourself like that okay otherwise um, if you're not using EE you're sitting there as a healer waiting a couple seconds so that you can use your recover or your cure right so this is the ultimate build for me uh, some people like to take the recover off and go into like a basic heal like this which is not terrible it's actually this is like faster so it does do a faster animation and if you're having five of the uh five of the heart of health it'll help a lot um but sometimes you're not able to fully heal with this so that's why i take um recover instead because it's just like 20 more ap so you know it's really a trade-off do you want faster healing uh, and faster time recovery like two more sec two seconds faster or do you want higher output and sometimes I think that higher output is a little bit better but some people like the qu quicker uh, cooldown so that's what it's really the only thing I would change I would definitely keep the cure on because it's just a huge single target heal and it's like really the only way you're gonna heal up your general uh, you know with a it's got to be with a cure usually this is just for like spot healing and uh, really quick fast heals so that's what I would suggest for this build um, I wouldn't really suggest too much more than this if you have to use guard or something like that you can take out one of the heals like this keep your dignity definitely uh, but you can use guard right here if you have to um, if you can forego using guard I probably would and then just have more heals but if you have to use guard again you can just put a guard in here just like that and take out one heal so that's pretty much the build I would use I wouldn't use any of this protect type type gimmicky weird barrier uh, light of uh, reliefs type stuff because it takes a huge amount of cost the cooldown is incredible and um, they can just switch targets if they're any good at all they'll just switch targets um, area cure is actually I, I was like dogging it the other time but it actually it's a really really fast heal but the cooldown is huge so if you if you have a team that's like super high burst damage and decent defenses like and you only need to get off like one or two heals you could do something like this where you have an area heal and a dignity like sitting here 
so that like say if you're doing these on cooldown you can you know ether exchange area heal and it just instantly heals them like really really quickly uh, just an option, you know, uh, and with healers, it's really, really about preference. Like, what what's your best, what's the best preference for your, um, for your playstyle of your, of your guild? But for my guild, I think this is probably the best way to go, or using this, like, right here. So that's just my t 10 cents on it, or whatever it is, to my opinion. So, <clears throat> okay, so I think that's pretty much it for the Oracle. Let's go ahead and switch gears to the Wizard. Um... Let's go ahead and do that. So, uh, da, 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 da. nope, I keep doing that. All right, wizard, here we go. Wizard, wizard, wizard. Boom. So now we have the wizard equipped. The main thing. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get this done. So, I would go for the wizard. I would go six, four, three, six. Basically, it's going to go have six weapons. All of them should be Magical Testament XL. Um, just because nothing right now works for the uh, Meteor Rain until I think the I think the new RGB weapon is going to work with it, uh, which I think they're going to be like the best in the game weapon. But it's 29 cost. But anyways, uh, Magic XL or Magic Magic Test XXL. I w if you can get Magic Test XXL on all six, you would be like the most godly wizard ever. Um, but you know, Magic Testament XL for all slots. If you can't even get one Magic Testament XL, you probably should go Photon. Because you're not going to do enough damage with the Meteor Rain to be like a main wizard frontline. Um, but... You know, if you want to try it, you could. I don't. I don't think I've ever seen a, a main wizard front line that doesn't have magic XL. But if you have like five of wizard, five wizards on the front line, it might work. So six of the weapons, uh, four armors and three, uh, four helmets and three armors, or three helmets and four armors doesn't really matter. Seven between the two, right? So seven divided by these two uh, slots here, and then six. Of these, uh, what do you call monsters? So, just uh, just a quick thing right here. Classes are kind of broken down, and if you're a general, you can go into general or oracle or archagoon, and then if you're a wizard, or you can go into archer or wizard usually, because that's just how the uh, cost is built out. Um, you know, you could be a pretty uh, crazy Archdragoon if you have a general or or kill build, you know, and all that. So those three classes, can you can go into each of them. And then if you're a wizard, you can go either marksman or wizard. And they'll be, you'll still have like a good build, uh, cost build out for them, okay? So uh, that's pretty much what uh, you, what I'm saying here is you go 6, 4, 3, 6, or 6, 3, 4, 6, right? Um, as far as the monsters go, you definitely want to have... Um, as much holy and uh, dark monsters as you can muster unless your guild is saying hey you have to have this specific monster for this specific unison so it's like oh we need to be be able to kill archers if they're going to unison us so we need apollo in there it's very unfortunate if you have to put apollo as a as a uh, wizard because it's not going to give you anything uh, on the attack stack you know because attack is physical attack right so uh, you would probably try to lean him towards using like an Alice or a uh, an Alice or like dark or light monster. If you're you know talking to your guild leaders like, hey, that's that Apollo is not going to do anything for my attack, but it'll give me some defense. But it's not really going to do too much for me. Um, even like a little bit better than Apollo would be Avsaris. So like on a on a like perfect scale for a wizard, like you would want to go for like dark or light monsters doesn't matter which one they're both really good for you and then it would go green monster then blue monster then red monster you know red monster being the worst right and then green is better than blue for you because it's just giving you more attack doesn't matter that it's giving you a uh, physical attack but it's giving you magic attack so you're just basically a dps class right so you want to have more damage all right so 
as far as the weapons yeah okay i already t talked about that with the magic test right all right uh and then helmets and armors just balance it out right oh, oh yeah and uh, helmets and armors you can actually if you're like full out crystal break um wizard you can go uh fatal test armors or if you have like a bunch of nyx armors you can go magic test armors and and helmets um so nyx armors and helmets do magical testament and then uh basically what you want to do is uh yeah get that magic testament on helmet or armor and, or you can go a fatal testament on helmet or armor if you have a huge amount of magical testament here i would just suggest going fatal test on helmet and armor but if you don't have any magical testament here uh then just grab some magical testament from your helmet armor all right so the next thing i want to talk about is skills so the skills that you want to go for wizard if you are a front line wizard there's no other thing that you should be using except meteor rain so meteor rain ee -E, uh these are your bread and butter skills as a front line wizard uh, then the next two skills you don't really need cheer so you should probably go with photon strike and photon crush or photon strike and photon edge because edge is faster than crush so you know something like this um if you're a frontline wizard it's pretty it's pretty good here uh the reason you wouldn't want to go meteor strike as a fr frontline wizard is because most of the time you're not going to get enough uh ether i mean uh cost to be able to do both you could possibly get it um it's it's really really up to um how la long you guys usually last but in my in my uh you know personal experiences usually wizards will either wipe the whole team uh with the meteor rain or a good amount of people with the meteor rain then just finish them off with photon crushes like one or two photon crushes um and like say if you say if you actually use your meteor strike and it hit uh one target and then somebody else used their meteor strike on the same target you guys both use so much cost to kill that guy and maybe one of the meteors hit the guy right uh, on one of you guys's um team or uh, one of you guys's uh warrior uh warriors wizards hit the guy you would use like one attack for 18 costs and all that when you could have just used you know a photon crush and you it's lower cooldown and uh it uses less costs right so photon strike or photon crush in here i would suggest those that skill set right here for a frontline wizard as um it is pretty useful here uh you could use skewer or something like this but it does do again it it does do uh you know high cost so uh kind of try to keep your cost a little bit lower if possible because this is right here using 23 costs this is using 18 so it's only more five more costs for a lot more um versatility and you know that's just the way i would play it um However, if you're if you're confident in that you guys can like say meteor rain all three or four people down, and then you have time to kill, uh, you could take a, like a cheer if you're just like okay like this is my front line I'm gonna have to use my cheer here and I'm gonna have to contest later, so you know everybody's gonna kill them off with meteor rain then cheer up so the till they get the uh, unison kill the rest off then switch to the crystal break team right. <clears throat> that being said uh let me go ahead and switch to a uh crystal break also if if you're like foregoing cheer uh and you keep this right here you could use guard here so just just for uh purposes of like say say you're facing another a whole another set of of uh what's the names uh mages right and you, you got you all your mages have guard they don't have guard you pop your guards guard all five of them they rain you and then once your guard goes down you rain them right and they all die <clears throat> so that's you know that's an option toy around with it guys but yeah definitely these two are the bread and butter skills for frontline mage meteor rain obviously right all right so far as far as uh, crystal break goes uh you want to definitely keep 
your ether exchange on the bar uh, for this what is this we can resolve yep that's the one we can resolve uh, for CB uh, mage here usually you only have like one CB mage but if you have more than one CB mage I believe you can just stack we can resolve and it'll be okay but you definitely need archers in there for the uh, wind of courage right but um, as far as um, DPS goes these are the two best DPS's uh, you can switch the uh, edge for crush you know or crush for edge whichever one you think is better because this one is faster and the cooldown is uh, lower so um, you know some people like taking uh, edge instead of crush but definitely you strike okay so these these two skills uh, ether exchange and then we can resolve for the very beginning uh, you put your weak and resolve up on the crystal it does uh, magic defense lowering and then you just spam these two skills back to back right it's an unfortunate it's unfortunate that uh, these this uh, attack is is physical damage and you're unable to change it to magic damage but that's just how it is so um, basically what you want to do is uh switch this up to let's go ahead and i think marksman is the last thing i wanted to talk about all right so it's going to be a six four three six build again and this is going to be a little bit different than the wizard um as you don't have any magic tests for the helmet and the armor um but the the actual uh weapons here i would suggest going full out dead eye and that's pretty easy for uh, an archer to do. And if you can get the Aquir bow, uh, Aquir bow, um, let me check my gear locker real quick. Uh, da -da -da -da. So this right here, this bow gun of Aquir, this is a really, really good bow for the stats that it gives. Um, however, you can only infuse it twice, but it's not too important. If you can get um, six of these bows you're gonna save a lot of costs on weapons and you can uh, infuse it all the way um, you know if you have a bunch of these bows that's that'll be really really good um, you could get like KFC bows and, and stuff like this um, this bow right here but it's harder to infuse because it's you you know require a bunch of 26 bows when you could uh, infuse this with a bunch of like say these which I, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys have a bunch of these bows lying around uh, or you can just use these bows as well. So any dead eyes really. So I personally think that archer is the most, the easiest class to max out. Easiest class to max out. Why do I think that? Because all you have to do for your your um, your gear is go in here, and you don't even need to spawn a bunch of china dresses and china hats, which are the fatal testament hats from um, before. Or from from spawns you just go in here and buy oh, I guess it's it is lower so you go in here and buy these soldier males and uh, they have physical testament on them on them um, you can buy three of these and then um, you do have to have the unicorn helmet or the or the uh, China buns for the helmet but those come pretty easily um, and what I'm talking about is yes there's a lot of Kaspasa and I did get this recently very lucky but where is that oh there they are so these China buns right here they carry Fatal Testament M you just get it to level uh, max skill 5 you do not upgrade it to SSR because this Fatal Testament M does never goes to L okay uh, it stays at M. Even if you have an SSR, I made that mistake before. And then this also, this also says Fatal Testament on it. So the Unicorn Helmet or the China Bun um, does that. And then look at what I did here. Where's the helmet? Oh, there it is. So this stays at Fatal Testament M, and then the cost goes up by 5, right? So you definitely don't want to do that. Don't do that. Um, and you're not going to be getting attacked anyway, so there's no real point. I was thinking like, oh, it's going to go to L, so it'll just be like higher Fatal Testament proc, but no, nah, it doesn't, right? Pretty fail. 
All right, so and then this is the other armor that you can get from spawns. However, look at the armor here. Also, you can buy from legend metals. So if you have like four slots, say if you have like uh, you don't have any of the spawn helmets, uh, you can still get four fatal testaments from just getting armors from just going to the guild thing and spending like I think it's like a hundred or something though. Like I think it's a good amount or two hundred, but. Um, yeah 200 but you can get that in not too long all right so that's what you want to do for the helmets and armors fatal testament all the way helmets and armors if you can get four or five of them in there on each of them that'd be great but don't sacrifice any of your um weapon and monster for that if you possibly can go all green alice or any 30 costs like the new the new uh, monster from the quest, that would be just fine if you got, um, you know, six of those. If you don't have any Alice or any Argo or any of that 30 cost green, you can just go all this chick right here and it that'll be fine. That'll work just perfectly for your archer. Um, so that's why it's so easy to gear archer right now. Um, so you go ahead and go six monsters, green monsters, 198 all of those. And then six weapons, uh, and then they they should be all dead eyes, and then you just 198 all of those. Um, you could go one fatal testament XXL in your in uh, your slot here. I wouldn't even put it. I wouldn't put it in my main slot because if you put it in your main slot, it'll override one of your um, override one of your dead eyes. So just put it in one of the back slots here, like the XXL fatal. If you put a fatal XXL in your main slot, it's going to override one of your dead eyes, and then your dead eye actually does more damage than fatal. So there's no reason why you should do that. Plus, you have uh, fatal armors that are going to proc back on on the back end here of your uh, weapons. Huh? All right. And then, by the way, fatal testament uh, M does the exact same damage as fatal fatal testament XXL. XXL is just higher proc chance. The Fatal Testament M just lower proc chance, but it does the exact same thing. It just crits, right? So it does the same thing. And then two Fatal Testaments that proc on top of each other don't do anything. They don't do anything. It does. It's the same thing as one Fatal Testament. Okay, that was pretty long. So let's go ahead and get into the skill abilities for the Archer class. Let's go ahead and change my class to Archer. All right. So let's go ahead and get into the abilities. What you want to go ahead and take for the Archer class is right here, High Circle Snipe, Lethal Strikes, Wind of Courage, and Ether Exchange. If you have five Archers that have Wind of Courage, one of the Archers needs to take off one of these Wind of Courages. And either you can either go um, we can resolve. I wouldn't suggest that. I would go uh, the Lancer skill just because auto attacks don't do magic damage. So go this um, reduces defense of all enemies by 20%. So this is your buff now. You have four wind of courage buff. Four times two is eight, which is maximum wind of courage buff. If you put another wind of courage buff up, not going to do anything, right? So if you put your ether exchange up, and then you use your beast, uh, uh, sorry, you use your bestial shout first, then you do your damage, then put your ether exchange up. That's how you do it. Uh, as a CB archer, this is going to be an incredibly important part of what you're doing. If you use your ether exchange first, and then your bestial shout, something like that, or you use like your um, auto attack ether exchange bestial shout is probably like the worst thing you could do, because. First of all, you probably have full um, full cost, so you don't need to use your ether exchange for a while, right? Uh, the first thing you want to do is use your bestial shout because if you don't use your bestial shout first, you risk people doing damage to the crystal without the debuff on the crystal. So you should be doing your your uh, bestial shout at the same time people are using their wind of courage. If you do this, then you get your bestial shout out first. Your wind of courage get buffed onto you, then. You hit them with your high circle snipe, then your lethal strikes, then uh, you you can use your attack, and then use your EE. So basically everything else is on cooldown, uh, and your attack is even on cooldown when you use your EE. Then you go back to this, 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 you know, uh, this, 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 
all the, all the way all day so it's like this 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 um sorry th i shouldn't be saying this <laughs> so high circle snipe lethal strikes attack and then your attack will probably come up again before uh so six seconds four seconds yeah so this will probably come up and then this will come up so it'll be like one two three one two three and then you just cycle out the cooldowns as they come up right obviously if you have like two or three seconds left you don't want to throw up an attack when like this guy is going to come up in one second you want to just wait a, wait a second and then do it because you can be in the middle of your attack animation when this thing comes up and you're gonna be like oh no i should have used my high circle snipe and we could have won so just be smart about it guys uh always use your bestial shout first always use your ether exchange after your attacks of the first round and then you're not going to be able to use your ether exchange again because a a uh, crystal break round is f actually 40 seconds exactly so you're not going to be able to use this again so it goes boom 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 bam all right so that's pretty much it guys i, I hope you guys enjoyed all of the guides as well as i hope you guys check out my uh my alt guild for um for the rgb round guys i hope hope you guys check it out because i really need two or three more um cb archers or two more cb archers and a healer um and then you guys gonna be be able to hang out with me uh while i uh in the rgb it would be pretty cool so um we are only taking um 130k uh plus and hopefully archers will have around these stats if you can have 45 plus that's just fine uh but we would we would like to have 50 50s if you can have 45k um of each of those we are really we really um would take you pretty quickly uh as long as you can make the all the rgbs like three out of three um would be really nice and then we don't require anybody to go practice uh, battles, so that's pretty cool. You don't, you only have to show up like once per day, or something like one out of three, uh, if you can make it. <clears throat> but we really, really need you to do three out of three if possible for the RGB. Okay. But yeah, this is my alt guild, and this is my alt, my alt character, right here. He has like the limited hat, which I really want. I'm jealous that he has it. But um, yeah. And you get to hang out with me, uh, Sakura, and my girlfriend, uh, Asian blonde here. So that would be awesome, guys. Definitely, um, definitely go check that out. All right. Um, so yeah, just message me or um, or my alt. Probably better to just message me because I'm on my alt less. So message me. That would be awesome. Shout out to all my fans that are uh, messaging me all the time, telling me uh, what's up, and asking me. Uh, questions yes that's fine you guys can ask me questions on my character so uh yeah thank you guys all for watching as always um if you guys could hit the comments below tell me what you guys thought about the video as well as give me that like button i would really appreciate it i hope you guys all uh have a successful rgb and i hope this helped you guys out a lot as always thank you guys for watching and take it easy peace uh.